How's it going guys? This is John from Turtle Mode FPV. Today we're going to do a physical mod on this Radio Master Boxer to uh, attach a foot pedal, like an external foot pedal switch. And I picked this foot pedal switch up from Street League Spec Drone Racing. This is based off a racer named Griff's Design. And this is pretty awesome. It allows you to plug right into the trainer port without modifying your radio at all. And it allows you to set up any of your switches to then run into this Arduino. And when you hit the foot pedal, this acts like uh, a master radio basically and flips the switch for you. It's a great design, but it just kind of seemed overcomplicated to me. I've worked with Arduinos before and I know how to do it or I've, I've successfully done it, but it's just not what I want to do. So I decided that... I don't really use these bumper switch. I love this radio, great radio. But these bumper switches are fairly deep and uh, the hole is kind of small and it's got a stiff spring on it and I just can't use that when I'm flying without messing up my sticks. So my plan was to just take this switch and wire it into one of the switches on my radio. And I was gonna add one of these stereo jack type setups, wire that into my radio switch and then wire the foot pedal into the male version so I can plug my foot pedal in and out when I want. And under that configuration, my switch would still work or my foot pedal would work. And I'm gonna show you guys that. Then I got talking to Freedom Duck, who does some testing for me down in Florida while it's freezing here in Wisconsin in the winter. He turned me on to the idea of these wireless foot pedals. I believe you learned about these parts from Pro Dangles. I'm not sure who originally thought of these, but these you can get on Amazon for about 10 bucks. And they're the components that go inside like a garage. The blue door. one goes in your foot switch and the yellow one's gonna get wired into our radio. And in the end of this project, we're gonna have a wireless foot pedal attached to our, I'm gonna put it to my SE switch on this radio, but you can really put it to any switch. Just a quick disclaimer before we get going, if you choose to follow any of the instructions in this video, you're doing so at your own risk. I don't claim to be a particular expert at electronics. This is going to be a physical mod to my personal radio. If I fry this thing, I'm not going to cry to Radio Master. I'm just going to go out and buy a new radio. I've done very little testing to know if there's any long-term negative consequences or any unseen consequences. So far, it's been working as a, a physical foot switch, so... We'll get on with the build video. Pretty easy to take these boxers apart. Came with gimbal protectors. I always kind of make fun of gimbal protectors and threw mine out. Now I know why they have gimbal protectors. First thing we're gonna wanna do, there's a couple little tabs here and that just pulls these grips off. They're like indestructible, you don't have to worry about breaking them. And there's four screws in the corners that we're gonna take out. It's gonna be a two millimeter hex driver. Don't forget to take your battery out. Cable goes through the case, so it won't come apart with the battery in here. And with those four screws out, the case is just gonna pop off the back. Pretty straight forward so far. But what I want to solder to, in my case, I'm gonna be adding it to this switch. And the solder pins are on the back of this board. So I need to get this whole board out. The next step is going to be taking out these Phillips screws. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws on this board. Once we get our eight screws out, then we're gonna start taking these wire harnesses out. Some type of little tool is usually probably makes this easiest. So these are my two gimbals that I'm taking off right now. If you want to replace your gimbals, this would be kind of the same process. And then you just take these four screws out and pop your gimbal out. We got to take this whole main board out. So anything connected to the main board is coming off. This is our speaker wire. And we're going to disconnect these switches.
this is the right tool for the job here. Something that can grab it firmly so you're not going to be ripping these wires out by accident. But you still have to be patient. It looks like everything is unhooked now. We don't have to unhook our antenna. What you're going to find though is when you go to pull this out of here, it just seems sort of stuck. It's hard to understand why. If we look at the end of the radio, these two jacks here. So we got our headphone jack and this trainer port jack especially sticks well through the plastic. So that's kind of the hold up. So to get this board out, we're going to pry that plastic back. And you can see, see how I'm prying it back and it's moving right here. And that'll pop that off of that one port. The second part on the right hand side is going to be the tough one. Take this button off probably to make it a little easier to get. I'm just going to grab this plastic here and forcibly push that plastic outward. And then that board is just going to pop up. There we have it. Our board is out. And we're going to talk about testing a little bit and how I figured out what we're going to do with this switch. What I did was take the main board out of this radio flip it upside down, and then hook it back up so it's still working like a boxer would any other time. But I'm able to get at some of these components to do some testing. I'm gonna put a piece of paper behind this thing, and that's just gonna help uh, make it a little bit more clear what I'm working on. This is the SE switch. And we can see down in our display here, when we push this switch in, the SE's going from an up position to a down position in our little monitor. When we take our meter over here, we could find out that when we're in our normal position, the, uh, the switch is closed between what I'm gonna call white and black, and it's open between what I'm gonna call white and red. When we push this switch in, now this one is open, and this one is closed between white and red. So it's a three pole switch. I started looking at how I could wire another three pole switch up in parallel. Normally you can't just hook these wires up directly because when you press one button or the other, it ends up energizing everything in the circuit, not just switching from one side to the other. Um, and the way to get around that is to add a relay or a physical switch so you can switch between your foot pedal circuit and your hand switch circuit. Fortunately, however, it's a lot easier because Radio Master isn't really using this as a three position switch. Right now when the switch is out, the white and red are de-energized and our SE is pointing up. And when we push this button in, the radio doesn't really care whether or not this one goes to zero or stays at the voltage. And we can demonstrate that by just simply jumpering from either of these powered up pins over to the red and we can watch the SE switch will register as tripping down. See how that's working? Now I'll move to the white pin and do the same thing. And we can see the SE pin moving up and down. So now I can tie my boost mode to either this SE or this SF switch and just add a simple two-pole switch to actuate this thing. And I could demonstrate that, I think, by hooking up this red and white wire to my pedal here. And there you can see the SE arrow moving when I actuate that pedal. The wires aren't touching that great, so it's not working flawlessly here, but you can see it working. So I'm going to take this a step further. What I was going to do was take two wires and wire in another stereo jack and then just wire a plug onto this that I could plug on to the outside of my radio. But then I decided to take it a different route and go with a wireless switch. So I bought this garage door transmitter receiver deal off Amazon and I'm about to wire the receiver into this radio now. First thing I'm going to do is heat shrink this because I don't want it shorten out on anything else. So there we go, that's covered up nice. I managed not to melt the wire. What the hell? So the yellow is common, the blue is on, 
and then the red and black power it's a relay switch this is just gonna act as a switch in place of this switch i'll show you how it's gonna get powered first we're gonna solder it on here yellow is gonna go to our middle prong here blue is gonna go to the bottom prong so i'm just gonna turn this so i can get at what i want to solder most easily and i don't know i think i'm gonna go about like 350 375 maybe Looks like they put some conformal coating over these things, so I'm gonna go a little bit hotter because I'm anticipating that might not solder that great. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my own solder on top of here first before, like pre-tin it. There, that way we know we've kind of burned through that conformal. I don't think I want that much wire sticking out. I'm going to clip that back a little bit. These are going to be coming back. Kind of anticipate that and angle them a little bit. get big old glob of solder on there so I don't have to mess with these wires too much and I'm gonna get some solder on these too I guess because I'm having trouble just holding stuff in place so I'm gonna be able to do this without messing around there I got a couple nice balls of solder on everything now I'm just gonna stick it to it Call that good. We're gonna flip this board over. These are gonna kind of come back along the side of the gimbal, and I'm planning on just taping this baby down. And I'm gonna wrap these two wires around. And I got a five volt pad on one side of this, and a negative pad on the other side of this white jack here. That would normally be for a Bluetooth device, I think. I don't know what people use that for exactly. It's for like head tracking and stuff, I think. I'm gonna kind of measure my wire a little bit shorter around here like such. But I'm not gonna go too short because I wanna make this easy enough on myself. Something like that should be fine. And I don't want much wire sticking out here at all because these are tiny solder pads, so I'm just cutting this off real short. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to solder right to the pins. You can get these four prong connectors. This is a micro JST four wire female connector. They're cheap, they're on Amazon. You'd be smart to just wait three days and order one but I'm impatient so I'm just gonna solder right to this so I'm gonna start out I clipped my insulation back a little bit further so I have a little bit more wire to stick in there and that's just gonna kind of help it hold it in place and I'm gonna tin this I switched to my real small soldering tip here so I can get inside that plug connector I'm gonna keep it at this 395 and uh, see how that works. These smaller tips don't hold the heat as well as the big ones do. So you almost have to use a little bit higher temp sometimes with the small tips. What I'm gonna try to do is get a pretty good amount of solder on this thing. So I can slide it in there and just touch my iron to it and fuse it all together.
So I just heated that prong up good until the two fuse together. I'm gonna do the same thing to this black wire and then we're gonna basically be done. And the two center ones are the RX and TX that we're not messing with. So that plugged in there pretty nice and securely. Hopefully this, uh, this will just solder on nice. Yeah, looks like that That probably did it. I think I'm just going to call that good. What I'm going to do is just gently wrap these wires around. And I'm just going to tape this baby down right there. That's where it's going to live inside. Get my double-sided tape out here. I'm not going to be stingy with this because I don't know exactly what it's going to be sticking to, so I'm just going to put a big old piece on there. Here we go. I don't think that's going to have a problem adhering down. With that in place, we're going to start putting this radio back together. Okay, so we got our radio cased back up. Uh, now it's going to be time to move on to this foot pedal and wire our second little switching module into that and get a battery set up. I'm gonna start by pulling this case off. If this video is a little bit rough, it's because I'm kind of pressed for time, so I'm not gonna try to overly edit it. I'm just gonna get it done. And I'm building this for the first time, so we're, it's not staged, you're watching me do it as I go. Uh, so I pulled a little set screw out I pulled the pin out of the hinge and then this cover comes off. You gotta watch out, there's a spring in here that'll come out flying out at a thousand miles an hour. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this switch out of here as well. Okay, so there are my switches out. What we're gonna have to do is get power coming in here. And then we're gonna wire it between the switch and this guy. I'm gonna desolder this harness that came from the factory. I'm gonna switch over to a heavy gauge XT60 wire. Uh, mainly just because it looks cool. This isn't like a high power situation where you gotta worry about like heavy gauge wires for the amp draw or anything like that. I get this iron pretty hot. For these big lugs, I got it at 380 degrees, and even at that, it kind of struggled to warm that one up. Those are just big conductors that suck the heat away from your iron. 380 seemed like it worked pretty good. I got those desoldered. In this case, I'm turning this three-position switch into a two-position switch, so you could just think of, like, this was our white one as our common. This is going to be, like, our black and our red. When you click the switch... It turns these two on. So if you just use these two, it's just sort of an on-off between the common and the normally open. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of my heavy red wire leads. The switch sits in here like this with this lead facing down. My power lead is going to come through here and it's just going to solder onto that prong that's facing down. This looks like 12 gauge wire. I wouldn't go any bigger than that because I kind of had trouble fitting this through the hole for the casing even, but it's going to work. I just wouldn't go any bigger. I'm going to pre-tin this wire a little bit. And just tuck it right in here underneath that. That's going to hold it for me good so it'll be easy to solder. Get a little flux on there to make it heat up quick. I'm gonna wrap my iron up too, so this thing just to go up to like 400. There we go, so we're soldered on there nice. Now I'm just gonna bring my wire back through. And I think at this point, I'm gonna try to get this black wire through too, because otherwise it's gonna be fighting me later on. It's gonna be fighting me now. 
Okay, so we got our, both our wares through. Screw my switch back into its home here. This will be tedious for the camera. There, so our switch is back down. Kind of careful not to like over tighten it. What I'm going to do with this black wire is just tuck it alongside this switch here where it can't touch any metal parts. And that's going to be my solder point <clears throat> right there for my little electronic gizmo. And I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and like pound a bunch of hot glue in here. And that is going to keep this thing relatively safe from wanting to short out on anything else. So that's definitely not coming out of there. And while that's cooling down, then I'm gonna work on strain relief in this. Uh, this had a metal strain relief that came with this switch, but it wasn't really designed for this heavy gauge wire. I'm gonna push these in so I got a little bit of slack to help get that under there a little bit easier. That's a big industrial zip tie. I'm not messing around. When my quad crashes and I lose the race and I kick this thing across the field, I don't want my battery pulling these wires out. I'm gonna crank that down then because I don't, I'm not taking this out again. And there we go. I think the best place to mount this is gonna be right here. Maybe we'll heat shrink it quick. It's always a good idea to heat shrink these little components so they don't short out on things. And I'm gonna take some of my double-sided tape It's coming to join the build. Wow. Sorry, kitty. I'm busy right now. Wow. Gonna put the guilt trip on. Meow. 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 Maybe I'll hit that with a little less hot glue too, just so it uh, doesn't decide it wants a new home someday. There, so our switch is stuck in there now. Our red wire is going to come back to here. So I'm just going to cut that off a little shorter. And then our last wire here is just gonna run over across here and tie into our ground. I'm gonna leave that long so it wants to kind of push itself away from that spring that's gonna go on this pin. So I'm gonna cut that one about here. Now I'm going to get a nice big glob of solder on here. Kind of preheat that ground point at the same time. There we go. So at this point, I think I'm going to button this thing back up. I might put a little hot glue on this too, just to keep these wires away from that spring. So we got everything tidied up in there and hot glued in there. I put a tiny little dab of hot glue in the end of this antenna too, so none of this stuff is going anywhere. To put this bag together, we're gonna put the small end of the spring on this pin, and then we're just gonna put the cap over it, trying to center it so that goes on we're gonna push the whole thing straight down 
grab our hinge pin, push the hinge pin back through. Looks centered pretty well. And then there's a little set screw on the back here that uh, just keeps the hinge pin from sliding back out. So there we go, back together. So I'm gonna decide about how long I want these wires to be. Go maybe about an inch long or something like that so it's not obnoxiously long. I'm just gonna cut these off before I think about it all day. Try to cut them off about even. Gotta remember to put this thing on before you solder. And like this isn't like a high power draw type of thing, so I'm not gonna worry like about getting too critical with the soldering on here. I think I'm just gonna stick it on there all in one shot. If I can get it all to stay nicely. Almost seems like it's gonna stay put. Need something heavy to hold it. Yeah, beautiful. I'm gonna crank this baby way up for these just so it gets it done. 480 degrees Celsius, super hot. Get a little flux on our components here while this is heating up. When you do these big ones, it's better to have it cooking hot and do it fast because uh, you'll melt the plastic if you stay on here too long. So I'm just gonna get a big old glob on there and I'm not too concerned if this is getting like great penetration into that socket or not because it's not high powered. That looks good. So the moment of truth, this thing's back together. I got a paint job on my foot pedal. I'm gonna power this radio up. Welcome to HTX. Throttle warning, switch warning. So we fire up like normal. We can see our SE switch right here. When I push the, the switch in, there it flipped down. There it flipped back up. I'm going to plug a battery into our foot pedal switch. And there you can see we went down. I'm going to let the switch go and we're going to go back up. If I lock this one in and hit the switch, it just stays down. So, good to go. And I've been using this for a little while. I got several hours sim practice in. I'll share a little clip Chase and Lonnie King in this week's Battle at the Ranch Street League Sim Series. Catch you guys in the next video. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'm not really a professional YouTube channel, but it does help get my videos out there. Thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and jump on board with Turtle Mode FPV as he chases down King. Some beautiful shots here on lap number two. Turtle Mode, the creator and distributor of the heavy metal one of our favorite street league frames and uh he's gonna be chasing down king and dejas is gonna be chasing down him oh this is this is good watching